I recently watched a video by Jeff Nippard on whether the sumo deadlift is considered cheating or not. The basic idea behind this belief is that the conventional deadlift is harder than the sumo. She concluded that to say that objectively the conventional deadlift is harder just isn't based on sound evidence. Just isn't based on sound evidence. However, there is extremely sound evidence to support the claim that the sumo deadlift is easier than the conventional and in this video I'm going to explain the science behind it. Of course, when people say the word cheating, what they actually mean is that the sumo is just easier than the conventional deadlift and not that someone is literally cheating somewhere. Now let's start with my basic point. In his video, Jeff measured a 3 inch difference in distance that the bar travels in sumo vs conventional deadlifts with the conventional being the higher of the two. He then changes the subject with arguments that I'm going to talk about later on this video, but this is the number one reason through which it is proven by science that the sumo is easier in a way. And I really wonder why Jeff didn't point that out because this is Biomechanics 101. Now here is the one minute science breakdown. Exercising produces work which is measured by joules. More work means more joules. To calculate how much work you put into a deadlift, you need the equation of work, which is force multiplied by the displacement or the distance the barbell moves up. This is the key. More distance equals more work on the same amount of weight and acceleration. So when Jeff is doing a conventional deadlift with 100 kilos, the barbell travels approximately 19 inches, which is 48 centimeters, and he puts 566 joules of work for each rep. However, in a sumo deadlift, the weight travels only 16 inches, which is approximately 40 centimeters. This way, the range on the sumo is approximately 15% less. If Jeff lifts the same 100 kilos for one repetition, he will output 472 joules of work. This is a huge difference of 15% less work in every repetition. By the time 10 repetitions are done, he will have put 5,660 joules of work on the conventional, but only 4,720 on the sumo deadlift. This is a difference of 940 joules in just one set of 10 repetitions. Therefore, he'll need to do two more reps on the sumo to reach a similar amount of work to the conventional. As you can see, the fact that the sumo deadlift needs less work is undeniable according to basic physics. This has been the way to calculate training volume since forever. You will find it in every legit strength and conditioning book like The Essentials, and I remember first hearing about it on my first class on biomechanics during my bachelor's. For those who want to have a closer look on the math of this calculation and understand how to do it themselves, I have a link in the description with a more detailed analysis. The main point is that less distance equals less work and this is one of the reasons why, along with the altered mechanics in starting position, we can lift more weights from blocks. And before my powerlifter friends go too crazy about it, I just want to say that I always thought of these two exercises as different and not as the one being the cheating version of the other. That being said, for fitness related purposes, I don't see any reason in comparing the two exercises since we always use the variations that best serve our training goals. The mechanics are different and the focus of these exercises shifts from the quadriceps to the erector spine muscles, so everyone should use them according to their goals and their own capacity. However, if powerlifters and bodybuilders want for any reason to compare which of the two is easier to lift the same amount of weight, they should definitely take into consideration the undeniable science fact that less distance equals less work. However, this doesn't mean that the sumo will be easier for everyone because the amount of work that we put into an exercise is only one aspect of the overall training intensity. The different mechanics of the sumo deadlift might not suit many people for many different reasons. However, this doesn't cancel the fact that for most people, the sumo deadlift is probably a better way to lift more weights. Also, note that calculating joules is the only accurate way to measure work. The simplified way of calculating training volume by adding repetitions with sets and weight is not accurate when comparing different exercises. For example, with this method, 
three sets of 10 repetitions with 100 kilos on the squat and on the calf raises would have the same repetition volume, which would be 3000 kilos for both. But if you take under consideration that the weight displacement on the calves is 10 cm while on the squat is 60 cm, then you can see that during the squat you exert 5 times more work. This is one of the reasons that 10 squats with 100 kilos are much harder than 10 calf raises with 100 kilos. My second point is an explanation to Jeff's observation that heavier and taller athletes seem to use the conventional deadlift more, while shorter ones use predominantly the sumo. Let me explain why this happens. To take advantage of the sumo deadlift, you need to get into a wide position that will allow you to cut the distance. As you can see, a short 59 kilos athlete is already taking all the space of the 131 centimeters between the plates with his stance. On the standing position, he has approximately a 70 degrees angle between the legs. According to geometry, if a taller athlete wanted to replicate the same angle, he would need 7 cm wider stance for every 5 cm of additional height of the hips. And to give an example, an athlete with 15 cm higher hips would need 21 cm wider stance. This space, however, doesn't exist between the plates and taller athletes are forced to use shorter stands and angles, consequently losing the potential advantage of a wide stand sumo deadlift. To summarize, my two points are 1. Physics precisely defines that less distance means less work, so if a sumo deadlift has shorter range than a conventional, then it will require less work on the same amount of weight. And my second point, to take the advantage of the sumo mechanics, you need a wide stance that is impossible for taller athletes since the distance between the plates is fixed at 131 cm. Taller athletes may still lift with sumo on a shorter stance that fits between the plates, but they lose much of the mechanical advantage of the wide stance sumo. This seems to be the main reason why taller athletes lift mostly with conventional deadlift while shorter athletes lift mostly with sumo. And before I close the video, I just wanted to say that Jeff has an outstanding channel in general that adds a lot of value on YouTube. Although I agree with many of his arguments, I think that he missed some basic points on this one and I just made this video with the intention of adding to the subject. No matter which deadly variation is easier, make sure to use what best serves your training goals and don't worry about what other people say. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends that argue over this topic and do me a big favor by liking and subscribing to keep this channel going. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.